Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the cluster term. But before talking about the cluster term in NetApp technology, I would like to talk a little bit overly and generally talk about the actual uh, cluster meaning and what is a cluster. And you might wonder what is a cluster. And I've seen a lot of people asking me what is the meaning of the cluster overall. Can you, can you explain to us what is a cluster in a simple sentence? Well, it's not really easy, but uh, to just explain a cluster in uh, some sentences. But I would like to discuss a little bit generally about the term cluster before going through the NetApp cluster technology and what is the meaning of the actual cluster in the NetApp technology. So let's uh, take a look at this uh, idea here. So we have the idea of cluster and it, it starts from the thing that uh, imagine that we have a service. And I'm just serving a service to some end users. And this is our end user. Uh, I have a user, for example, here. And this user is trying to get service. I don't care about the service right now. It could be a web server. It could be a dead database, actually. It could be a file server. Or in NetApp technology, it's actually the data, right? So we have the data inside the, the service object, which I, I would like to call it a node. So we have a service. We are serving the service to our end users, and they're happy. But there is one problem with this. What if the service goes down? If the service goes down like this, let me choose the red one. If it goes down, our users, they are not no longer happy and they become unhappy. So how we can fix this problem? The way that we can fix this problem, it's really easy. And that is just if you have a service and if it is an important service, it's a good idea to have another object beside it. It's the same service. If I call this node one this is actually node two right and uh, and this is my user so i can just redirect the user to node one for example and node one it's gonna be for example in this scenario active node i can just uh, mark this as active and the other one as passive or standby So the user can go to node one and get whatever it wants. And when the node one is down, actually it's not working, it can go to node two for serving the service and just uh, get whatever it wants. But the problem is that if we, serve, if we just send the user directly to node one, how the user actually can understand the node is down and it should go now to node two. This is a little tricky here, and that is we shouldn't actually send a user to node one. We should actually send a user to an object here, which we call it cluster. And we send a user to this object, and then we decide here on the cluster that we should send the traffic right now to node one or to node two. So this cluster is a tiny software. It's like an application or service, which is managing everything. And we should have a point of contact here, which usually it's an address, right? It could be, a, we will talk about all the addresses and all the details if you're not familiar with the addresses, but it could be IP address. It could be a WWPN for the fiber channel or anything, something, uh, anything else. But uh, we're just sending our user to this cluster and then cluster decide whether node one is down or it's active or node two is active based on the scenario that we have or there should be some contact between these two and with the cluster actually to understand what's going on. So this is a scenario like active and passive and the cluster, it's, it's just a redirected traffic to the node that is active. This is actually for data uh, availability so we have a ha scenario here it's a high availability we always we can make sure that we always have access to the service if services on node one is down we can go to node two and for adding more resiliency to this scenario we can have more nodes here so instead of just two nodes we can have node three 
we can have node 4 and we can have different nodes here and we can expand our cluster across all of these nodes right this is our cluster now our cluster and our user can contact the cluster first and then our cluster decide which node is active and the rest for example are passive or they're not working and then the user will contact this one which is active and then uh, if this one goes down the other one of the other nodes it become active and or users can't contact that one and it can still work this is one scenario the other one that I, I like to explain more about is that imagine that we have some nodes so now we know the term node or nodes these are nodes actually inside a cluster we have different methods in the cluster configuration and services that we are running. Imagine this is a four nodes cluster. Node 1, node 2, node 3, and node 4. And so we have the cluster, which is something like this, just managing all the nodes. So in the previous scenario, one node was active and the rest they were a passive or standby. But we can have some scenarios that all nodes could be active in active state. It means that your user will access the, the cluster. This is the cluster. And then based on the number of users, imagine you have, if you have four users here, one goes to node one, one goes to node two, one goes to node three, and one goes to node four. So in, in this case, you're actually load balancing the traffic diff across nodes. So if you have 4 million users, 1 million to node 1, 1 million to node 2, 1 million to node 3, and 1 million to node 4. So you're actually, you're having high availability, data resiliency, and load balancing in this scenario. So this is the meaning of the cluster. It means that you want the service to be available all the time. So you can have an HA, one active and one passive, or some active, some passive. Or you want to have a load balancing it means that one of your nodes cannot do their the all all the job imagine if you have one node it, the one node actually cannot handle four million users it's too much for a node but if you have four nodes yeah that would be okay so this is generally the meaning of a cluster uh, in the very very in actually very high level and we will discuss more about the clustering and how we can configure it. I have a different section related to the, how the clusters actually are configured and how are different methods. But I, before I start anything related to the uh, ONTAP, I just wanted to explain a little bit more about the, the meaning of the uh, cluster very, very overall and high level. So let's go back to the slide here. So in the in a NetApp technology, actually a cluster is one or more uh, FAS system or FAS controllers or all flash controllers that the ONTAP on, on software is run on top of them. So here, uh, from now, uh, we have terms nodes and we have controllers. They are actually the same. So it's uh, the controller or node are the physical boxes, their hardware, their NetApp hardware that the ONTAP software is run on top of these uh, physical box, boxes, actually. So we have nodes, we have controllers. If we combine these nodes together, we have multiple nodes and we call them a cluster, right? So now we know what is the meaning of a cluster. And uh, in ONTAP terminology, a clone controller is a node, and they are the same thing. Uh, in a cluster with more than one node, actually, we need a network that connect these cluster together. So if you take a look at the picture again, so you can see here, uh, uh, as we have nodes, so this is our node, for example, oops, uh, this is our node, node 1 and this is our node 2 so and we this is our cluster which our user or contact in the cluster the point of contact is the address and then based on if the node is active or if the node is passive the cluster will redirect the traffic to the proper uh, node so there should be 
something in the background, a network, that these not to be uh, should be able to talk with each other from this network in order to start, uh, send heartbeat to each other, send signal to each other that which one is alive. So uh, node two is actually listen to this link and uh, check node one to see if node one is available or not. And at the moment that node one goes down, node two see uh, can check the node one from this link and can understand that oh node one is down it's not working anymore now i am the only one and i'm now the active node so it can change itself from node actually passive node to a uh, to an active node and then it can update the cluster and then cluster change this direction of traffic to the here and the user actually can reach to the right po point so here is the meaning of the cluster and actually we need a, a network on the background to be able to contact to be able for the nodes actually to contact each other but uh, in the and in the netapp scenario we need a network in the background to do this so overall the meaning of the cluster now i guess it's clear so a, cl a cluster it's a mix of the nodes and mix of the controllers and we can combine them together and depending on the workload requirements that we have, we, we can have different nodes, different models uh, inside the uh, actual cluster, and we can work with the, with the cluster. And in the cluster, actually, uh, we have different stuff on the cluster. We have uh, network ports, we have expansion slots, uh, and in the node, actually, we have these uh, uh, ports so each controller have they have their own network ports they have their modules and they have their uh, they have their nvram uh, which we will talk more about these uh, these terms but uh, in a very very high level and overly a cluster consists of consists of all of these things that you're seeing right now on the on the um, powerpoint so in uh, a cluster consists of node which their controllers and ONTAP software is running on the controllers and nodes actually. And each node they have different ports. Uh, there could be network ports and fiber channel ports. And then we have expansion slots, which we can use for different purposes. And nodes actually they have uh, other things connected to them. And usually these, the other stuff that you're seeing here, they are related to a node. Uh, like disk shelves, for example, they're connected to nodes. We have SAS ports and cables, and we have disks and everything. So all of this stuff are actually connected to the uh, to the node. So here it was the the term cluster and an overall view of the cluster. What is the meaning of the cluster and uh, the things that you may see in a cluster? I uh, hope you have a good time. I'll see you in the next module.